let's talk about the first type of slowly changing dimensions, in which we only retain the original data. This is applicable if there are no changes in our dimensions. So we really need to make sure that there are no changes occurring in our dimension. And in that case, of course, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to implement any strategy. We can just leave the dimensions as they are. This is usually applicable for date tables, except there can be some attributes in this date table, for example, company holidays that might be subject to changes as well. But in general, the date table is really a static table that is not really having any changes. So this is a common type. Also, there can be many attributes that are just called or labeled as original. So for example, the original product name or something that we just know, this is just kept as it is and we will not have any changes in that. So of course, if we have such a situation, such an attribute in our dimension table, this is the most easiest option because we don't need to make any changes. We can just load these attributes in our table and just not make any changes in here. And therefore, if we happen to have such a situation, this is great because there's no additional work and no additional thoughts necessary. But just be aware that you are really sure that there are no changes or at least those changes don't need to be reflected in our dimension table. But now sometimes of course there need to be some changes and that's why we want to move on to the first type which is the override type. So that type we want to now see in the next lecture. Of course, in the real world, many attributes in our dimensions are subject to changes. And we also want that these changes are reflected in our dimensions so that the users can really see the updated and real new values. And that brings us to the first type, the override slowly changing dimensions. In that case, we just update the old attributes and basically just overwrite them with the new values. In that case, we have only in our dimension table the current state reflected. So for example, if we have a product table and some of the names of the products are changing, for example, oatmeal biscuits is changing to delicious oatmeal biscuits. In that case, we just update this value and also we have then only this updated table. Of course, this can be also the case if, for example, the category changes, then we can also just update the value and we have then this new updated table. And you see that this is very simple to implement because we just update the values in the tables, so in the dimension tables, and nothing else is necessary apart from these very simple updates. So also the fact tables don't need to have any additional updates. So this is very simple, but of course, sometimes there can be also some problems associated to that. So the main thing, of course, is that we don't have any history of the changes. So once we make this change, for example, if we change the category to biscuits, we can now only see how the data is grouped with this new and updated category descriptions. So in that case, we have probably less values or less amount of sales for the category sweets because now it's just this product is in the category biscuits. And of course, if the changes are not so significant, so for example, if we have delicious, just an updated product name, it's probably not a significant change and this will not affect all of our analysis. And therefore, in that case, it is not a big deal. And in that case, we can really ignore that. But in some cases, for example, if the category is changing, this can be a little bit more significant and we have to be a little bit careful with that. Another note is that sometimes if these changes are happening, we can affect existing reports, existing queries. So for example, if we make a grouping, so 
in SQL, we can create a calculated column. So we can use case column. So when we have a certain condition and that is depending on one exact name, in that case, we have to be a little bit careful that now this updated value is not breaking any existing query. Usually this is not the case for most of our changes, but in some cases, if this is a delicate change, we also should keep that in mind so that we can also update these queries and have a look at some queries that might break. But again, this is the most simple method of maintaining updates in our dimensions by just updating the values and not doing anything else apart from that. So this is the type one slowly changing dimension. Now let's continue with probably the most powerful slowly changing dimension. And this is the type two. We've seen in the previous lecture that the type one slowly changing dimension had the problem that there's no history in our dimension. That means that once we make a change, only the current state of the dimension is reflected in our table. And all of the previous states have not been tracked and are not available for us anymore. So when we have a look at how this works, we've seen that, for example, the category is changing. Then we just override the value of sweets for the category and we use now the value biscuits. And of course, this can be problematic in the real world because what we would like to have actually is that only the values or the products sold after the change has made will be now associated to this new category. So in our case, we want if we have made the change after sale number four, we want that line number three is associated now to biscuits. But all of the oatmeal biscuits that have been sold before the change should still be now also in the previous category because at that moment in the history we didn't make the change and therefore we still want this to be associated to the sweets. So this is how we would like to have it. But now with this type one, we only would have all of the values, now all of the historical sales, also this oatmeal biscuits associated to this new category. And therefore this is not respecting the history. And this is now the problem that this slowly changing dimension type two is solving. Because now with that type, we can perfectly partition and segment our history. So previous values can still be associated to a previous category or a previous dimension value. And then from a moment in time, we can associate this to a new value. And this is what we want to have in our data warehouse. Because you remember that history is very important in our data warehouse and we want to maintain also the history. So this is now what we can do with this type two slowly changing dimension. And therefore, whenever we are expecting common changes in our dimensions, this is the default strategy that we can go to. And it is so powerful because it perfectly partitions our history. But now let's have a look at how this looks like. So how this is implemented. We've seen previously, we've just with the type one, just overwritten the values. But now what we want to do, whenever there's a change, we don't want to touch the previous value in our dimension, but we want to add an additional row. And then this additional row, of course, has an additional primary key in our dimension and then this just contains the updated value. And now how does this reflect in the fact table? Well, it's also very simple. In the fact table from now on we just use that new foreign key from this dimension. So from now on we use for this product oatmeal biscuits only the foreign key 4. And with that we don't need to make any changes in the fact table. So we don't need to make any updates, just use from that moment on the new foreign key. 
And with that, we get now the correct results and we completely perfectly respect the history in our data. So this is what we usually want to have if we are expecting common changes in our dimension values. And now one question might arise, what can we now do in order to calculate the number of products? Because now in our dimension table, we see that there are now different products. So for oatmeal biscuit, we have now two products. But keep in mind that we still have in this situation, we still have the natural key. So in this case, the product ID. So what we could do is just count the distinct values of the product ID and with that we would still get the correct number of products. So this is just highlighting that with that approach we have the highest analytical values and we still have all of the possibilities. But this is now still not perfect and you might still have some objections. So for example, how can we with this approach find out what is the list of all of the current products. So we cannot distinguish now between those two, which is now the current product. And therefore we need to also implement a few strategies to administrate this type two slowly changing dimension. And how we can do that, so what we can add to get even more out of that, we want to see in the next lecture.